How's it going, everyone? What you're going to see today, as you can tell by the title, is uh, a Battlefield 4 version of my long-range sniping tutorial. As I've already alluded to in the previous statement, I did do a Battlefield 3 sniping tutorial, and a lot of my subscribers and video views have come from that previous video. It's by far my most viewed and most positive feedback video, and I appreciate anyone who left a like left a comment or actually appreciated the video thank you very much this one here will be the battlefield 4 version and there's a lot of differences you have to know versus battlefield 4 and 3 sniping and i'll account for all of them with the ideal goal making you a better overall sniper that said i do feel all the new additions to the game have made sniping a ton easier than it was in battlefield 3 uh, and another thing you should know is i did make another tutorial if you're brand new to say the Battlefield series, like say you came over from Call of Duty or whatever, uh, if you do want to learn about that, and I'll link it in the description or, or it's some form of annotation, I did do it on how to become a better sniping, a sniper in Battlefield in general, uh, which will cover the extreme basics, especially if you're brand new to the game and you're a rookie. Uh, and a lot of those tactics will come into play here. Uh, but that one's for more aggressive or medium range sniping, shorter range sniping inside of 2 through 2, 250 meters. This one here specifically is going to cover longer ranges, which to me is about 500 meters and above. A lot of people say, oh, long range sniping is 1,000 there. That's their opinion. That's fine. But to me, you have to go out of your way to find someone 500 meters away. Uh, and the reason being I say that it's 500 meters is to me long, because 500 meters is a long shot. And, any, and you have to go out of your way to find it. So that's where I'd put the benchmark. Uh, the first things before I get started I have to get off my chest is that I'll remind you a previous line I used in my Battlefield 3 long range sn uh, sniping tutorial, which basically said that if a person buys a game for the amount of money they spend, they should be able to do whatever they wish with it as long as they're having fun within the confines of the game. I shouldn't have to point that part out, but the amount of idiots saying I'm condoning hacking doing this is not only ludicrous, it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, so that said, I'll usually join a, a sniping specific server because it's just far easier this way. You get a ton more practice, you get a ton more targets, and you have absolutely none of those play the objective at all costs people breathing down your neck. Uh, but I noticed the play the, obje the play the objective guys always seem to forget about the meat shield continually running into bullets, costing the team tickets. Forget about the guys not dropping ammo, forget about the guys not dropping the health packs, but they'll just pin it on the snipers, but I won't get into that argument. Uh, secondly, and another thing I have to get off my chest before I start, uh, is to those out there who believe I'm enabling people to go away from the objective and shoot, there's a good chance that if they looked up how to become a better sniper, watch this or my Battlefield 3 tutorial, tutorial they were either already doing it, or they were going to do it anyway. I teach a skill here, and not a play style. What happens after that is completely subjective and up to the individual. Do not shoot the messenger because it's useless. Uh, now that that's out of the way, let's get started. As usual, the first thing with all of my tutorials I'd recommend is setting up your kit for maximum effectiveness. Uh, the rifles you'll probably find the most success with in terms of long range sniping are the SRR-61 or the M98B. According to the stats on Simthic.com, the two have the same damage ratios of 100 inside 12.5 meters and 59 past 150 meters, which is what we'll be looking at. Other rifles like the 338 Recon and the M4OA5 basically have the exact same ratios, uh, with the difference being the drop-off ends at 100 meters instead of 150. Uh, so that's another option for you if you would like those two. But the, the interesting side note gun, uh, rifle I must point out here is the FYJS. Because its damage drop-off is down all the way down to 36 instead of 59, you do not want to use this gun at long range. Even with the 2.5% multiplier for the headshot, doing the math, 36 times 2.5 is only going to give you 90. You cannot get a one-shot headshot kill beyond 150 meters with this gun. The reason why I choose the SRR-61 as my primary weapon is because the bullet drop is the least for any sniper rifle in the game. Uh, which is measured at uh, 6 meters per second per second as the drop, and the third fastest muzzle velocity in the game, trailing only the M98B and the FYJS. The rest of the sniper rifles have the actual gravitational constant of the Earth of 9.8 meters per second per second, which means that the bullets will drop a bit more than the SRR-61s. I find it weird too, just as a side note, that the SRR-61's bullet has a different gravitational constant, but whatever achieves balance, I guess. It also has the second furthest range in the gun, uh, range in the game, 
capable of hitting targets up to 3,100 meters away. Only the M98B at 3,250 meters beats it. So based on that max range, fastest muzzle velocity, least bullet drop, uh, the SRR-61 and the M98B should be your choice of rifle for long range sniping. Uh, that being said, the rest of the rifles minus the FYJS should work just fine if you're more comfortable with those or you just want to see one hell of a more wicked bullet drop. Okay, next up is the battle pack system uh, for unlocks in Battlefield 4 for scopes and attachments has changed from Battlefield 3's. Uh, so it doesn't unlock through progression anymore, so some of the scopes might not be readily available for you unless you have enough kills with that particular rifle. If you don't have them, get more kills and go to TDM or Domination to get the battle packs to unlock them. My personal preference uh, is the new edition of the 40 times scope for 1000 meter plus sniping. You'll see plenty of footage me of me using the 40 times scope. Uh, if it's above 500 meters to about 1000 meters, I'm also fine uh, with the 40 times, but the 20 times scope might be more comfortable for you here if you're starting. The main, re the main problem I find with the 40 times scope under 1000 meters is relocating your target after reloading or scanning an area even with the straight pull bolt. Uh, because it magnifies an area so significantly, uh, it may be hard to relocate the target without staying scoped in, which will draw massive attention to you because of the scope glint. The 20 times may be a more comfortable solution here, uh, but it obviously isn't the same magnification, so that part is clearly up to you. I prefer the 40 times scope for the most part whenever I go long range sniping, though. In terms of the barrel, I use uh, you can use the flash hider because it does exactly as it says. It dramatically reduces the amount of flash visible to the enemy. Uh, you can also use the muzzle brake. It reduces the amount of vertical recoil by 25%. So if you're using the straight pull bolt here instead of the bipod, this will help quite a bit. Uh, if you go the suppressor route to stay off the minimap and reduce muzzle flash, bear in mind that you are dramatically reducing the range and increasing the bullet drop of each shot you take. So unless you're really familiar with long range sniping in general, I would not recommend starting with a suppressor, otherwise you'll have absolutely no muscle memory or comprehension with regard to comparing using a suppressor versus not using a suppressor's bullet drop. So start without one, I'd say, to start. Uh, in terms of accessories, variable zoom will give you an extra 14 times option of zoom, and the rangefinder are the only really two options I'd choose here. Uh, the rangefinder does exactly what it says by displaying how far the target away is, uh, but it should be stated that it seems to stop showing the range past a thousand meters, uh, but the rangefinder still would be my clear choice. Uh, in my original Battlefield 3 tutorial, I, I stress not using the bipod, but I've softened a bit up on that stance. Uh, I personally still don't use it very much, maybe a, a bit past a thousand meters, and prefer the straight pull bolt. Uh, but using the bipod can be helpful, especially to those learning how to snipe long range. Or the veterans who just choose to go, say, 2000+, plus, because that would help quite significantly. Uh, using the straight pull bolt allows me to be more mobile and exponentially increases the amount of areas that I can stand behind cover without having to worry about going prone. And that's the key. Going prone basically leaves your head as the only area exposed, so if I definitively hit you as much as it does reduce your surface area logistically, it is a definite kill. And I just, I can't stay complete, I personally am just not very comfortable lying down the whole time. Uh, standing may allow them for them for them to hit your shoulders or your chest, and then you can quickly relocate if you're intelligent. Plus the straight pull bolt allows you to stay zoomed in to quickly provide a follow-up shot. Uh, without leaving your scope and inside of a 500 meters you can do this quite easily but again I'm softened my stance a bit on it that's down to your preference so go nuts there uh, with regard to my sidearm I usually use the P226 because I've grown familiar with it but again use it works for you uh, with regard to recon loadout I advise using the MAV or the PLD the reason the PLD is uh, a source I'm mentioning here is because it has a built-in rangefinder as well if you choose the variable zoom accessory instead of the rangefinder, so it gives you the best of both worlds. It also uh, can help to laser designate vehicles as well, so you'd be helping your team in the process. You'll also want to use the sniper field upgrade because it reduces the time you're spotted, increases the time the enemy's spotted, and allows you to hold your breath 45% longer in terms of time. First and foremost rule of all sniping though I usually preach is to spot and spot everything you see, especially if you do this as a not in a non-sniper server. Uh, you'll 
uh, you'll want to help out your team as much as possible even when you're going for long range kills. Uh, for the spotting system is to hit Q on PC, uh, the right bumper on Xbox One, R2 on PS4, and the selector back button on PS3 or Xbox 360. Use this button all of the time, even when you're not sniping. Uh, basically, when you're playing Battlefield at all, use this. Your teammates will thank you for it. Uh, the next tip is to find cover and find it away from where the main battle's occurring so that you're not killed by vehicles or infantry that slip past your teammates. Use the cover the game provides. Use rocks or other buildings as your cover. It can be anything from a hill to a crate. Uh, just to, as long as it hides as much of you as possible, but you're still able to see the enemy, it can work. So imagine what you'd do in the circumstances given the angles and elevations at your disposal. Uh, the second part is once you're set up, first look towards obvious sniper areas. They'll usually be elevated areas or between rocks or on a hill. Uh, if it's in rush or conquest mode, they'll tend to be at their spawns. If you can't see them by scoping in, hit the spot button. You should be able to. Uh, you should be spotting everything you see anyway as a good or improving battlefield player. Uh, they'll pop up when you do this if you're not in playing in hardcore mode. Uh, the now, the next part is when you find your target. The next part will cover the absolute most basic part with regard to long range sniping. If you follow, you'll be following this procedure each and every single time. Align the exact vertical portion of your crosshair directly over the target. If you're slightly to the left or slightly to the right, you'll miss because even the slightest bit of deviation from center at this range turns, say, a, a millimeter off target to maybe several meters off your target downrange. At shorter range, obviously, off a millimeter doesn't matter because the bullet won't lose as much height or drop at all. Um, and this is where having the bipod, if you're new to long range sniping, can help you an absolute ton. Uh, where you put the horizontal part on your crosshair will be determined by the next part I'm talking about. And this part here is basically the, the part that's new to Battlefield 4. This part wasn't in Battlefield 3, so if you watch my other tutorial, you, it won't be there. It's no, uh, you, in Battlefield 3, you sort of had to go through guesswork to gain the experience to estimate the bullet drop and figure out the range. This is not the case in Battlefield 4. Uh, Battlefield 4 gives you the ability to dope your scope or zero it. For PC, it's the V key, and for console, it's the down on the D-pad, I believe. Uh, as the in and an indicator will appear on the bottom of your screen that goes up from 0 to 200 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 1,000 meters before resetting. When you do this, if you're exactly 500 meters away from your target and you set it your 0 to 500, all you have to do is set your crosshair directly at the target and fire. You do not have to compensate for gravity whatsoever. This is where having the rangefinder helps. Uh, your zero will appear on the left side in blue numbers of your scope, uh, and if you're using the rangefinder, uh, it will the range will appear in red letters on the right side of your scope, and I'll point them out in the video. It's pretty rare though that targets are at the exact range of your zero uh, of your scope anyway, and that's what, and the next part's what I'll show you. There are two different scenarios: overdoping or underdoping and overdoping your scope. Underdoping occurs for uh, occurs when, for example, you set your scope to 500 meters, but the rangefinder shows the target being 600 meters away. The fix for this is actually really simple. Just aim 100 meters higher on your scope to account for that 100 meter difference between the zero and the range. On the 40 times scope, that's about halfway before the first notch below the crosshair I found on average. Uh, the second process is called overdoping. This occurs when the enemy might be 800 meters away, but you've zeroed your scope to 1,000. The trick here, as bizarre as it seems, is to aim to the difference of 200 meters below your target. I know it seems weird, but I'll give you an example of it. Now, overdoping can be completely ignored and avoided if you'd like by simply just resetting your scope and configuring it. If you think it's weird or stupid, that's fine too. Uh, but the difference, though, is that sometimes if an enemy is set up for a shot and he's staying perfectly still and you think, oh, all I have to do is align my scope and bam, there's a kill. Sometimes the time it takes to reconfigure your scope, he might have moved or relocated, making your shot either difficult or next to impossible. So it's important to train yourself this way as well, as well so that you don't actually miss out on potential shots. Be familiar with it so you don't have to use... Be familiar with it, but you, again, you don't have to use this method all the time. You'll see examples and I'll show you how to do it in the video. The next part here clearly is after you've managed to take your shot, stay scoped in and track actually where the bullet travels after you shoot. 
If it's too low, adjust your crosshair higher. If you're high, do the opposite and then put it lower. After every shot, make the necessary adjustments until you either hit your target or he runs away. I've had a lot of encounters where I'll just miss a guy because the bullets may be whizzing just by his head uh, but and he'll run away for it. It's frustrating because you don't have a target anymore, but it's intelligent strategy on his part. Uh, the key thing to remember is that it will take you a few shots to get used to the range, especially if you're not experienced. But once you get used to the range, especially with all the new features that Battlefield 4 put in, you'll get a lot of one-hit shots, and you won't have to worry about like what Battlefield 3's was, where it was sort of guesswork, unless you figured out the exact range. Two points to remember as well, always hold your breath on long-range shots, or when the opponent isn't moving, to steady the rifle sway. Uh, this is by you uh, holding shift on PC, or it was on... Uh, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 by holding down the left stick. I'm not sure what it is for the next-gen consoles. Uh, it seems obvious, but a lot of people don't bother to do this, especially when they panic. Uh, the other key point, and it applies here even if you use the straight pull bolt like me, is to always scope out if a target is moving or if you've missed or hit a body shot. And this is important because if you stay scoped in, uh, you run the risk of losing him behind cover if you can't see where he's going. Just a point to keep in mind. Again, that's another subjective point. If you choose not to, that's fine, but it always works for me. Uh, Battlefield 3 didn't have range finders or anything of the sort, so you had to estimate range based on experience and also using indicators such as the conquest flags to tell you the distance away. Uh, you can still use these indicators, especially if you're past a thousand meters because the range finder doesn't work past a thousand meters. So a conquest flag telling you that you're 1,100 meters away from the target will give you an estimate of, say, a 1,200 meter shot. But basically, with the rangefinder, sniping in general has become a shit ton easier in Battlefield 4. Lastly, keep in mind that practice makes perfect just like every other skill you'll develop for the rest of your life. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you're new, subscribe and have a look at my other sniping videos, uh, gun reviews, rifle reviews, armor tutorials, and all sorts of other aspects of Battlefield 4 that I've covered. Until next time, I'll see you later.